we're going to wrap up our unit on virtual memory. Ideally, by bringing together things that you remember about caching and maybe even a little bit about file systems. And in particular, what we're going to look at is the problem of page replacement. That is, how do I pick a page to evict from memory when I need to bring a new page into memory? So let's think about the fact that memory can fill up with pages, right? So just like we think about the TLB as a cache for translations, memory is a cache for virtual memory pages that might actually live on disk. And with all caches, it can fill up. So if I have more processes running than I can fit in memory, or maybe even just one really big process, I might get to the point where I want to bring a page in, but all my physical pages are actively being used. And I have to decide who to kick out. I say, no problem. We've talked about replacement policies. We have things like LRU and MRU and LFU, and those work great. So why can't we just use those? Well, the reason we can't just use those is that they depend on the fact that the entity managing the replacement decision, in this case, the operating system, has visibility into the access pattern. That is, when we think about a software cache, typically, every access to that cache is examined by software and software services the cache. But we have this hardware-software partnership here where the vast majority of the translations are handled by the hardware, the MMU. They might get ca caught in the TLB. Therefore, when the operating system has to evict a page, it doesn't actually know what's been accessed recently. So the question is, how is the operating system going to get some information to help it make a good decision here? Well, let's look at what the hardware provides. So it turns out that the hardware is going to provide us exactly two bits of information per page. A use bit, which is going to get set every time a translation maps to a particular physical page, will set that use bit. So it might get set over and over and over again, and that's fine. And if the page is dirty, then we'll have a different bit that says, not only has this page been used, but it's dirty. So there's data that has been written by the application and hasn't been saved anywhere. And given these two bits, what we'd like to do is come up with an algorithm that will let us approximate LRU. Recall that LRU is just an approximation for Bilotti's. So if we could approximate LRU, that's probably pretty good. So our goal here is to figure out how to use these use bits and maybe the dirty bits to approximate LRU. So intuitively, what LRU is saying is, I want to find the page that was used furthest back in the past, right? It's been unused for the longest period of time, and that's the one I'm going to evict. Now, since memory is pretty big, maybe instead of finding the page that hasn't been used in the longest time, I could just find a page that hasn't been used in a long time. That sounds attractive. And the way I'm going to do that is by using these use bits, right? The use bit, when it's set, says somebody touched this page. So intuitively, if periodically I clear those use bits and then I wait a while, I could look at the use bits to help me determine which pages have been used since I cleared them. Rather than doing this in bulk, I'm going to do it only when I need to. So here's the algorithm. It's called clock because it's modeled on the metaphor of an analog clock where you have, you know, a round clock face and you have a hand sweeping around it. And the algorithm is actually quite simple. At any moment in time, the hand points to a particular physical page. When you need to allocate a new page, you look at the page that the hand is pointing to and you check its use bit. If the use bit is zero, i.e. this page hasn't been used, then you say, fine, I'm going to kick it out and I'll use that one. If, however, the use bit is set, that says, well, someone has touched the page since last time I looked at it. So I'm not going to allocate this page, but I'm going to flip its use bit. I'm going to set its use bit back to zero. And then I'm going to advance the clock hand and look at the next page. So what happens is as the clock hand moves around, we're either finding pages to use or we're clearing use bits. If the page for which we clear a use bit is in heavy use, that use bit's going to get set again very quickly, and the next time we look at the page, it'll still be set. On the other hand, pages that aren't being actively used, the next time I come around, that use bit will still be zero, and then I can reclaim it. So let's watch this in action. 
I'm going to give you a page reference stream. So these are virtual page numbers of the pages I want to access. And we're going to initialize memory. Our memory is teeny here. It has exactly 11 pages in it. And it is currently holding virtual pages 1 through 11. And what I'm going to do is go through an access pattern and watch what happens to the clock hand. So we're going to start out and touch page 1. So page 1 happens to be in memory, which is great. And what that's going to do is set the use bit. OK. Now I'm going to touch page 3. Once again, page 3 is in memory. I'm going to set the use bit. Now I'm saying I here, but what this means is the page is in memory. So there's a translation for it. So when we access the page, the hardware automatically sets the use bit. The operating system is actually not involved in any of these hits. Next, we access page one again. That sets the use bit. It's already set, but, we, but the hardware resets it every single time. And so we're going to keep going. And as long as we're hitting in main memory, the hardware is simply happily marching along, setting these use bits. But now we say, I want page 55. There's no translation for that. So the hardware hands control over the operating system. The operating system goes, OK, I know how to find a page. I'm going to look at my clock hand. My clock hand is currently pointing to page one, and its use bit is set. So I'm going to leave page one in memory. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear its use bit, and then I'm going to advance my clock hand to look at the next page. And sure enough, I got lucky. This page does not have a use bit set. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to get rid of two and bring in 55. So I've found a spot for this new page that looks like it was a pretty good choice. Let's keep going. And now the hardware, when I actually touch that page, will set its use bit because, in fact, I clearly loaded it because I wanted to use it. Next, we get an access to page four. That's in memory. The hardware sets the use bit. Page five, same thing. And now we get a request for page 77. OK, there's no mapping. Hardware turns control over the operating system. What does the operating system do? It says, well, I'm pointing to page 55, and that one got used. So let's clear it and move the hand. Now I'm looking at page 3. That got used, too. Clear it, move the hand. Page 4, same thing. Clear it, move the hand. This is getting a little tedious. But eventually, what we see is that when we finally get to page 7, we say, aha, here's a page whose use bit has not been set. I can kick this page out of memory. So we're going to kick out page 7, bring in page 77, turn control back over to the hardware. Hardware touches this page because it was requested, and we set its use bit. So this is how the clock algorithm is going to work. Now, there are embellishments you can do for clock as well. One of the things we haven't talked about is what happens if a page is dirty. If a page is dirty, before I can evict it, I have to write it out. So in that case, if we imagine that the page I just evicted here, 7, was dirty, I have to do a write of the old page and then bring in the new page. That's doubled the length of time it took me to handle my fault. So there are embellishments to the clock algorithm that use two hands. So they have one hand that moves in front of the hand we talked about. So it's a little bit ahead of it. And it just looks for dirty pages. And it proactively says, ah, this page is dirty. Let's write it out. And the reason it does that is so that when the other hand gets around, it's likely to hit a clean page instead of a dirty page. And that's called a two-handed clock. So recall, the reason that we can't use LRU is that many, many, many of the accesses to the objects that we're trying to manage are invisible. The hardware handles them and doesn't tell us about them. And so we're trying to figure out how to do a better job on top of that. In addition, as the operating system, I may want to impose lots of different policies on top of this page allocation algorithm, right? So if I'm running out of memory because you're hogging too many pages, maybe I actually want to pick your pages, not my pages, to evict. So you can imagine having you know, clocks that run within a particular processes pages or a particular user's pages. So a clock is sort of a fundamental mechanism that we can use to figure out which pages aren't actively being used. But there are a lot of different policies that you might also want to implement in the operating system. 
And if this is interesting to you, then you should come back next fall and take operating systems from Valve.